God is good. And all the time, you don't sound like you are serious. I said, God is good. And all the time, if you believe that, put those hands as hard as you can for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you tonight. We believe that God will reach out to each and every one of us tonight. How many of you are expecting God to say something to you? Amen. Amen. The Bible said that man at the gate beautiful came looking unto Peter and John expecting to receive something. And the Lord showed up for him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, let's go right quick to the word of God. Exodus chapter 4 and we're going to read verse 31 and we'll go to chapter 5 and verse 1. Exodus 34, sorry, Exodus chapter 4 and verse 31 and then we'll go into chapter 5 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you Lord. The Bible said the people believed. How many of you believed? The people believed and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he looked upon their affliction, they bowed their heads and did what? What did they do? That is so clumsy. What did they do? What did they do? They worshipped. They worshipped. They were excited that God has come to their rescue. God came to deliver them from their trouble. They were going through so much at that time. And when they heard this man of God say, listen, the man Moses, God has showed up to me and said, listen, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Hallelujah. They were excited. And the Bible said they fell down and they worshipped. All right, chapter 5 and verse 1. We're going to read quite a long, uh, a long reading, but just bear with me. And as we read, probably I would explain, or maybe we'll just finish reading. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told who? Who did they go tell? Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. That is exactly what God said to him. Go tell Pharaoh. All right, verse 2. Mm, verse 2. The Bible says, And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, nay, that will I do what? Let Israel go. Ah, yeah. My God. Keep going. Next verse. And they said, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Next verse. Keep going. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do you, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works and to get on get uh, you unto your burdens. Next verse. Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burden. Ah. And Pharaoh commanded the same day. When? The day God said they should go. Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, you shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go gather the straw for themselves. Keep going. Mm. Keep going. Verse 8. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, you shall lay upon them. That means whatever number of bricks they were making when you were supplying them with the straws and the you know, to build the building. He said, let them make the same amount of bricks and let them also go look for the straws. Are we together? All right. And the Bible says, and you shall lay upon them and you shall not diminish aught. Don't reduce it. For they be idle. Therefore they cried saying, 
let us go and sacrifice to our God. This is from Pharaoh. Next verse. Let no more work be laid upon the men. Let there be more, sorry, let there be more work lay, be laid upon the men that they may labor therein and let them not regard vain words. Don't give them a chance to think of any other thing. All right, next verse. Give me the next verse. Let me read from the screen. My screen is very slow. He says, and the taskmasters of the people went out and the officials, and they spake to the people saying, thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Next verse. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it. Yet ought not your work shall be what? Your, 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 the number of bricks you will make will not reduce. But we will not supply you straw. Next verse. So the people were scattered abroad and throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. Next verse. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. Next verse. And the officers of the children of Israel, which, when, which of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmaster has set over them, were beaten and demanded. And wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making the bricks both yesterday and today as heretofore? Next verse. Keep going. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servant? Next verse. And your, then there is no straw given unto thy servant. And they say to us, make brick. Behold, thy servants are beaten. But the fault is your own people. I think, uh, yeah, keep going. Let's see. But he said, you are idle. You are idle. Therefore, you have say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Next verse. Go therefore now work. For there shall no more straw be given to you, yet you shall deliver the tale of brick. There's bricks. There's verse. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came from, forth from Pharaoh. And said, they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge you, because you have made our Sabbath to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. Next one probably stop in the next one. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Next verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of the land. And the church say, all right, I just want to continue from where I stopped on Sunday. There was a lot of reaction and a lot of testimonies from Sunday's message. And um, a lot of people that were really just on the verge of quitting, giving up. Life was just unbearable, going through one thing or the other. You know, um, I received so much test messages. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for the ministration of your word. Lord, speak to us again once more. We desire to hear from you, Lord. Speak through me, Father. Anoint me to minister this word with precision, accuracy, excellence, with power, boldness, and authority to the end that the believer shall be strengthened. In Jesus' name, we pray and the church say, Amen. Well, today I'm going to, the title of my message is When God Hides in Your Affliction. When God hides in your affliction. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You know, I was telling us on Sunday that usually whenever we get into our comfort zone, God sends what we call light what? Affliction. Somebody say light affliction. The Bible says that our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more eternal and exceeding weight of glory. For we look not at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. But the ones that are not seen are eternal. Say amen to that. Alright, so we, we started with that scripture and we began to deal with 
when we go through trouble, when we go through affliction, when we go through trial, which everybody will go through. All right, only two amens from the pastors. All right, but as long as you live, you will face some trouble. You will face what? Some trouble. Um, to some degree, both us and the people of the devil will face trouble. People face trouble every day, both believers and unbelievers. Now, the reason why our own is a bit more intense is because now we have left the camp of the wicked. And so now he gets intense with us so that we can quit on the God we serve and go to his camp, which no, none of us will do in the name of Jesus. All right. So uh, the story that I just read is a very interesting story. I began, I think I shared about it on Wednesday, on Sunday, um, about the transition of the children of Israel from the land of Goshen or the land of Egypt. Goshen is in Egypt. It was just a secluded place for them to live um, when Jacob moved all his children down to, e to Egypt. So they were dwelling in the land of Goshen, and all of a sudden, um, the Pharaoh that knew Joseph died, and all that generation, even all the generation that came from the land of, Cain, of uh, Israel down to, to Egypt, all of them died. But then, the Pharaoh that now took over did not know Joseph. They didn't have respect for Joseph, they didn't care what Joseph did to preserve Egypt. And the Bible says that he now called the people and said, well, this set of people are multiplying exceedingly. In, this is in chapter 1 and from verse 8. They are multiplying. Let us deal wisely with them. Lest when our enemies, when there arise an enemy against us and begin to fight us, they will join our enemies to defeat us. But then the Bible said something that the more they afflicted the children of Israel, the more they multiplied. Can your amen be louder than that? And I decree that over you that the more they trouble you, the more Satan gathers against you, the more you multiply. The more you will increase. The more you will prosper. The more you will buy your properties. The more you will own lands. Can I hear a loud amen? And so this whole drama began, they began to treat them very bad. And the Bible said that the children of Israel at this point cried out unto the Lord. What did they do? They cried out unto the Lord. Church, anytime you are in trouble, cry out to God. Unfortunately, God's people, when we are in trouble, we don't pray. Do you know how many of us have lost our prayer life here? And let me tell you, church, if you don't spend time with God, you will become a carnal Christian. Everything you will do, you will answer with the flesh. Remember the scripture I read in 2 Corinthians 4, 16? You all remember this scripture? the scripture, the Bible said that for this cause we faint not, for though our outward man perish or is aging or is losing strength, our inward man is renewed, is, is renewed what? Day by day. So, anytime you are not in prayer, I promise you, you will answer to every situation of life with your flesh. You will answer with anger. You will answer with carnality. You will answer with quitting. You will answer with giving up. You will answer with depression. And all those things are part of the works of the flesh. Say amen. But when you are connected to the spirit of God, when you are in prayer and study of the word, every time Satan comes up, your spirit man responds. And usually your spirit man will respond in love. Will respond by the word of God. That's why we say maintain a healthy prayer life. Let somebody say amen to that. So they, they cried out to the Lord and then the Lord now called Moses and said, go and deliver my people. Go and tell Pharaoh to let them go. I don't want to tell all the stories about Moses, his birth and all that. It was a very dramatic birth uh, that happened with Moses. At that time when Pharaoh uh, saw that the children of Israel was, was multiplying and he's doing the same thing in South Africa today. He said to the midwives of the Jews, whenever a, Jew, a Jewish woman or a Hebrew woman give birth to a son, what do you do to the son? Kill the child. 
If he's a woman, spare the woman. That's what is happening in South Africa. Satan has unleashed demons that are killing the sons of the land. How is he killing them? Many of them are alive but dead. By the time a man says, I'm a woman, he's, he's not living. Okay, oh, no amen, all right. Uh, you know, put them in prison. Many of our men are in prison. Many of our men are useless. They're not doing anything with their life. They are on drugs. Why the women are working. That's the same tactics Pharaoh is using in South Africa. Or Satan is using in South Africa. Lock up the men. Make sure they are not productive. Make sure they don't have jobs. All right, let me leave that alone. But nonetheless, the Bible says that Moses grew up and God now called him to go and deliver the people. But the amazing thing is that when Moses now came to Pharaoh from where we start, in fact, Moses came to the people and said to the elders of the people, listen, God met with me in the wilderness. He appeared to me in a burning bush and told me all these things, gave me signs that it was him. I asked him who sent me. He said, tell them that I am, that I am, sent you. And the Bible said he told them that God appeared to me and said, listen, it's time for your deliverance. Say amen. amen. It's time for your deliverance. It's time for your breakthrough. It's time for you to take off to your next level. But then the Bible said that as soon as Moses told the people, the people rejoiced and they were so happy and that day everybody worshipped God. Because look, every one of us want to hear good news. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is what? Good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe both to the Greek, the Jews and everyone. It's to everybody. But after Moses told them this good news, Moses now went and told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, this is what God said. Pharaoh said, I don't know your God and I will not let the people go. And then here comes the message I want to preach. There you go, Pharaoh. God has spoken. Instead of Pharaoh to do what God said, what did Pharaoh do to the people? He increased their burden. Somebody say he increased their burden. He made their life a living hell. In fact, if you read Exodus chapter 3, give me verse 17. Let's read Exodus 3, 17. Let me bring something out for you. Exodus 3 and verse 17, quickly. The Bible says, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction. This is God speaking. I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of Canaan, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, Jebusites, and unto a land flowing, how? With milk and honey. God wants to take you to a wealthy land. God wants to take you to a prosperous place. That's the will of, it's the will of the Father. And that's why you must never blame God that things are not happening in your life because God's desire, he said, I wish above all things that you may what? Prosper and be in hell even as thy soul prospereth. That's the desire of God. So God said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of Canaan, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Next verse. Keep going. And they hearkened unto, they shall hearken to thy voice. And thou shalt come and thou and the elders of the, uh, unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say to him, the Lord God of Hebrews have met with us. Now let us go, we beseech thee. Three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice unto the Lord. Next verse. This is God. Oh. Hello. Who has been speaking? God now said to Moses, I am sure. If God is assuring you, <laughs> God is assuring Moses that I, the king of Egypt will not let you go. Not by a mighty hand. He's not going to let you go. I don't know who told Christians that the moment you become a Christian, everything becomes easy. I don't know where you heard that from. But that's not true. That, 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 anybody that, I mean, otherwise, I mean, church, <laughs> every one of us will just be doing party every day. Amen, somebody. <laughs> he says, he will not let you go, not by what? <laughs> Meaning, Moses, 
What I am sending you to do, go do it all. But the result you are expecting is not what you're going to get. You're not going to get the result that you are expecting. Because a lot of people think once God has spoken, that means, oh, tomorrow we are going to get it. Pharaoh doesn't work like that. With Pharaoh, he will not let you go unless by a mighty hand. God has to do something. Now, church, in the midst of all this, God had already planned what he would do to Pharaoh. But here is God's people, the children of Israel. As soon as they increased their task, what did they do? They turned back to Moses and said, Moses, you are a false prophet. How did you say you heard from God? After hearing from God, our trouble increased. Church, after God has spoken your deliverance, Satan will increase the fire. Am I communicating? It's important that you understand this because there is too many. You know how many people are quitting on God every day? Many people, listen, listen. So many people are giving up on God's ways because there is a delay. There is a delay in what God said. God said something to you five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, that there is going to be a dramatic change in your life. That is true. And God is not lying. How many of you know God never lies? He never lies. But as soon as he said that, the fire has increased since then. Is there anybody that have experienced what I experienced? The fire has what? Increased. Satan has put more load on your life, more trouble. Have you ever lived life when you like Job, you, 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 they come to tell you, hey, Job, uh, we were gathered together, your sons died. Next thing, another person is coming, your business is, is gone down. Before you know it, another news, like one bad news to another, to another, to another. And it seems like God is not with you anymore. Have you ever been there? Listen, God is still there. What I came to tell somebody tonight, that in the midst of that affliction, in the midst of the trouble, the fire increasing from one level to another, God is even more there. Hello, church. How many of you know Moses was in the will of God? Hello. Was Moses a drunkard? No. Did he sin? No. Did God send him? Yes. Did he hear God? Yes. Did Pharaoh listen? No. Did the pain of the people increase? Yes. We, it, it's, that transaction happens to us the same. The same. So that you don't end up saying, you know what? God is no more there. God, God is no more with me. Listen, it's amazing how God can hide in your trouble. Now, that trouble doesn't look like God is inside it hiding. But he's hiding there because of what he wants to do to Pharaoh. Because unless he drowns Pharaoh, he will continue for the rest of your life. So many times, God will wait for situations to get worse. Oh, they told you, uh, you know, things were bad here. And then all of a sudden, another thing is added. Something else is added. The situation is getting worse. And yet, God is there, but he's quiet. He's silent. Is it that he doesn't care? No, he cares. It's a proof of his care that he's there, quiet. And many times, this is the point where many of us turn back and say it's no more working. So you find a young lady trusting God for a husband. Gets to the age of 30. Oh, the Lord has spoken. 35, nothing yet. 40. Nothing yet. And then she now says, you know what? Man, since God is not coming through. Sibu. Sibu, what are you doing, man? What's up? Let's hook up. Then you start hooking up. By the time you know it, you get pregnant out of wedlock. Your life, you know, heads another direction. You've missed the plan of God. Sibu starts beating you up. Starts treating you bad. You break up with Sibu, and from there, you join, because it's just going to be from one thing or the other. 
except you really grab a hold of yourself. Because many times, that's how people keep going down. You find a woman now, she has three or four kids with four different women. It's because when she started going down, she didn't stop. She continued. And the wrong, and the things that pertain not to the will of God. That's why I said to you that in this kingdom, there is no plan. What? B. It's only God's plan or no plan. Say that to yourself. Say, in the kingdom of God, there is no plan B. It's either God's plan for my life or no other plan. And please, I beg you, stick to God's plan. God is not crazy. God is not stupid. God does not abandon anyone. If he's quiet, there is a reason. There is a reason. There is a reason why things have not worked out the way you think it should work out. And let me also say this. He makes all things beautiful in his time, not in your time. Not in your time. Church, the one thing I know about God, when God does it, everybody wants to be like you. <laughs> Jesus, I'm like, you know, today when I see like my sons, my people that want to be like me out there, everyone, I get messages everywhere. Today, I went to look for a desk for my office because they're doing renovations in my office. And I, I, I was looking for this Chinese shop in Midrand where I had bought, uh, you know, my desk before. It's a, owned by a China, Chinese guy who imports, you know, a luxury executive office desk. So I was looking for that shop. And as I got into this estate, this office park, I was driving past and I saw this company that makes, uh, you know, furniture. So I stopped. I said, there is a particular desk I'm looking for. Can you guys make it? They said, our boss is not around. Okay. I said, okay. Now, I had called one of my friends. I said, listen, who, uh, Pastor Walter, I said, who can make me uh, executive desk? That Because I want white. So, um, he says, look, this so-and-so person sends me the number. I called the person. The person says, I'm in a meeting. I will call you back. So, I left that one. So I'm in this office park now, and I stopped by this company. The company, they, I met with the people. They said, no, we can. They showed me their job, excellent. Then I, they called their boss and said, somebody is here who wants to make this. They send the picture of what I want. She says, listen, can I talk to the person? So I, I take the phone. Hello, um, who's speaking? I said, my name is Apostle Felix. Is, is it the Apostle Felix? I said, what do you mean, the? He said, but you sent me a message earlier saying that somebody gave you my number. I said, yeah. He said, wait, wait. Is it Apostle Felix, the preacher, the one house of treasures? He said, I watch you every day of my life. I have your messages stored on my phone. He said, anything you want, I'm ready to make it in three days. I will leave every other job to do your job. Church and the moral of that story is that, you see, after what you have suffered, let me, let me encourage somebody. I know you're saying I'm 40. I'm not married yet. I'm 45. And you're really trusting God. Let me tell you, the day you get married at 45, everybody will think marrying at 45 is the reigning thing. I, you don't know this God. That is, he will make your situation the standard. People, in fact, some young people will start praying, Lord, no, wait, wait, don't give me a husband till I get to 45. Let me be like Sibongile. Say amen, somebody. That's how God does it. So that you don't, you don't mess up halfway, you don't quit, you don't drop. The children of Israel said to Moses, these were people who just said, we believe. Did we read that or not? They believe God. They said, we, we believe that God sent you. We believe it's our season of deliverance. All of a sudden, Pharaoh increases the heat. They turn back to Moses and say, you are, you, God didn't call you. You are a false prophet. But yet, the man of God was in the will of God. I don't know who Satan has multiplied the fire on your life by three times. And you are on the verge of saying, you know what? God is no longer with me. Wait. That Pharaoh is going to drown. 
God is setting up that Pharaoh to drown finally. God never abandons his own. No, God is not irresponsible. God is not wicked. God is a loving father. He cares for us. I always say that among all the men of God, and I'm, I'm, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm biased when I say that. Among all the men of God, I always say that God loves me most. Say amen, somebody. God loves me. I, I believe it. If he loves you, you say it. He has enough love for everybody. But Mina, I believe that even right here in this church, he loves me more than everybody. Say it to yourself now. Say it. Say God loves me more than everyone. Convince yourself once more. Say God loves me more than everyone. Oh yeah. He loves me. Church, what do you do when God is hiding in your affliction? Lazarus is dead. <laughs> you know, there are so many stories in the Bible, for goodness sake, that should tell somebody that, listen, there is no quitting in this kingdom. I, I have seen too many quitters that are serving God. And you see, church, when you quit, it means you didn't know God. You didn't know him in the first place. John 11, 1. The Bible tells us the story of his two sisters and a brother, Mary and Martha. And the Bible talks about in verse 2 that this is that Mary that poured the expensive ointment on Jesus' feet and also wiped his feet with her hair. And the Bible said that Jesus loved Lazarus. I mean, look at all the qualifications in that scripture, just from verse 1 to verse 3. It was that Mary that anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Next verse. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, the Lazarus you love is what? What, what is he? He's sick. Look at the next verse. Jesus heard that, he, he Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. In fact, put the scripture in the Amplified. Put it in the Amplified. Help me with the Amplified version. Please. Let's start from verse 1 in the Amplified. I read this in the Amplified. It blessed me. Amplified version. Now, a certain man named Lazarus was ill. He was in Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister lived. Next verse. Keep going. And Mary was the one that anointed the Lord, the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was now sick. Next verse. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love so well. Whom you love what? So well. So well. Look at your neighbor say, God loves you so well. The one whom you love so well is sick. Next verse. When Jesus received the message, he said, this sickness is not to the end of, in death. But on the contrary, it is, to, it is to honor God and promote his glory that the Son of God may be glorified through by it. Next verse. Now, Jesus loved, look at Jesus. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And they were his what? They were what? Now, church, we're not talking that Jesus, you know Jesus is God in the flesh. These people were Jesus' dear friends. Dear friends. Dear friends. And they were his dear friends and he had them in loving esteem. Not only were they his dear friends, but he held them to a love, in loving esteem. Next verse. Therefore, even when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he still stayed what? Two days longer in the same place where he was. Right now, some of you are Lazarus and Jesus has st is staying two days longer and you are about to quit. Can you, are you understanding what I'm preaching tonight? Jesus is staying two days longer. It can be in your marriage. It can be in your finances. It can be in your job. In whatever situation that the enemy is trying your faith. The Bible says Jesus stayed two days longer. Yet he loved them and they were his dear friends. And he held them to a loving esteem. 
Look at all that qualification. And yet he abode two days. Next verse. Then after, after that interval, he said unto his disciples, let us go back again to Judea. Keep going. The disciples said unto him, Rabbi, the Jews only recently were intending and trying to stone you. And are you thinking of going back there again? Somebody say, go back there again. You know, church, many times uh, when we face a closed door, we assume that that door will never be open again. Look at your neighbor, say, go back again. Where they rejected you, go back there again. Where they shut the door of the interview against you, go back there again. God is working out something in that place. The Pharaoh that has shut the door is about to drown in the name of Jesus. My God. So the disciples keep going. Next verse, verse 9. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? Anyone who walks about in the daytime does not stumble. Stumble. But because he sees by the light of, the, of this world. Next verse. But if anyone walks about in the night, he does stumble because there is no light in him. And the light is lacking to him. Next verse. So he said these things and then added, our friend Lazarus is at rest and sleeping. But I am going there that I may awaken him out of sleep. Okay, let's keep reading. If it is actually sleep. The disciples answered, Lord... If he's sleeping, he will recover. No problem. I mean, the guy is sick. Normally, anybody that is sick, the one thing that is predominant is what? Sleep. Amen. That's what the most times, they actually put you to sleep so that through, because one of the things that happen during your sleep is that your body rejuvenates itself. No, amen. Oh, you don't like sleep. Okay. That's a good church. All right. So the disciples answered, if he be sleeping, he will recover. Next verse. However, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he referred to the falling into a refreshed and natural sleep. So, church, watch this. The people he loves, his dear friends, their brother is sick. Jesus abides two days. Eventually, he picks up by a word of knowledge that Lazarus is dead. And he's still in the town. He still, he, he didn't, he didn't rush. Oh, Lazarus is about to die. No, he said, this sickness is not unto death. It is that the glory of God may be revealed through his son. It's not unto death. That problem will not kill you. Say, amen. I say that challenge will not kill you. You are coming, no matter what Satan takes from you, you will recover all. You will recover all. Hmm. So, Jesus now eventually went. When he got there, Martha said, Ah, Master, if you were here, my brother would have not died. Jesus said, No, he will rise again. He said, No. And we know he will rise in the resurrection. Jesus said, Eh, eh. There is nothing like in the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. You are dealing with the resurrection. You are not dealing with the person that resurrected. He is the resurrection. Huh. So, Jesus said, I am myself the resurrection, the life. Whoever believes and adheres to my, and trusts in and relies on me, though he may die, but yet shall he live again. The next verse repeated the same thing. He said, those who are alive, as long as they hold on to me, they are strong in their faith and realize and trust in me. The Bible said, they will not see death. They will not die. Let me tell you, believers don't die. We just transit to a better glory. Say amen, somebody. But eventually... What did he do? He got to the tomb of Lazarus and brought Lazarus out of the grave. But church, why did, does God wait for two days? Why does he wait and watch? It seems like your sufferings are increasing and he's not doing anything about it and he's quiet and he's hiding in that trouble. 
It is because many times a lot of us choose several options. And what God does is waits for you to exhaust all your options. And also sometimes it's to pass a message to Satan. Because a lot of times when God does something when it is still small, uh, they will say, somebody will say, oh, it's my salary, it's my, my doctor, it's my this, my dad that got me out. But when doctors have exhausted everything they know, and then you now go before God, and God does a miracle. That's why, listen, church, I beg you, don't wait to know God when you are already in trouble. Know him now. Because let me tell you, when you are in trouble, when your spirit is not strong enough, you're going to say, you know what, I will choose to die. You will make that choice because your spirit cannot stand anymore. But if you fortify your spirit, let me tell you, even if they say it's stage 10 cancer, you can in the middle of on your death day, you tell Satan, I will not die. You will stay here. I assure you. But the moment you say, no, I want to go. God can't do anything. There is no preacher that can do anything. And that's how important it is for you that as a child of God, don't build your muscle in the day of battle. How many of you know the horse is not prepared in the day of battle? When is the horse prepared for? He said, for the day of battle. It's prepared prior to the battle. Prior to the trouble. The reason why many people are quitting their marriage is they were not prepared for the battle in marriage. They were not prepared. The reason why many people are giving up on life is because they were not prepared for the trouble of life. And what I'm doing this teaching for is to prepare you that life is full of trouble. He said, don't count it strange when you go through diverse temptations. That's James talking to us. When you go through diverse troubles, don't look at it as, oh, how? Why am I going through trouble? I'm a child of God. God loves me. He shed his blood for me. He died on the cross for me. Why am I going through issues? No, he said, don't count it strange. It's our normal way of life. You will go through something. But be assured one thing, that God will deliver you. Because if he did it in the Bible, he will do it for you. Oh, no, amen. Your amen is so weak. He will bring you out. You are not going to stay there forever. Listen, church. Job went through what he went through. The Bible says, after they told Job, your children have died, your business has collapsed, all your servants are dead. The Bible says, Job went, poured ashes on his head. Now, not just that, the, Satan now touched his health with sore boys. How many of you remember the story? But the Bible said something in Job, that in all this, Job never was offended by God. It was never. He didn't ask God, where are you? God, why have you done this? God, you are not God anymore. He never. He never. In all this, find that scripture. Job, in all this, Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly, which is what many of us are doing today. We are charging God what? Foolishly. Where was God when that happened to me? That's charging God foolishly. God is in the midst of that trouble. God is there. It may seem like you look. Man, Job 42.10. If you read all the stories of everybody in the Bible, same thing. Everybody ended up in the glory of God. The Bible says Job 42.10. That Job, God restored Job. How many times? Twice as much as he had when he prayed for his friends. And God blessed Job. Everything that... The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. And the Lord gave him how much? Twice. Whatever you have lost, whatever you have, the enemy has taken from you, God is giving you back double. If you have lost your marriage, God is giving you a, a man or a woman better than the one you had. I am telling you, God never restores you at the same level. 
No, you lost your job. Somebody fired you. Somebody accused you falsely. You lost your job. Listen to me. The next job you are getting will be twice the salary you were earning before. That's how God works. That's how he works. Everybody. Let me tell you, God never ends in the negative. God always ends in the positive. He never ends in negative. No. How many stories can I tell you? The story of Joseph. You all know about Joseph? Hello, church. Do you know the story of Joseph? How the boy dreamt that he was going to be, you know, uh, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars all bowed before him. That he was going to be a, a, a breadwinner in his family. He was going to lead the family, including his parents. The Bible says he ended up in Egypt. Got to his brothers hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. Thank God for one of them who said, let's not shed innocent blood. And then they threw him in the pit, hoping that he would come back to rescue him, the one that said they shouldn't kill him. But the Bible says, as they turned their back, they were the Ishmaelite traders, and they sold Joseph to slavery. Same story. Ended up in Egypt. Ended up bought from the slave market. Ended up in Potiphar's house. Serving as a slave. Potiphar, from one trouble to another, Potiphar's wife liked him. Wanted to sleep with him. He said, no. I will not do this wicked thing and sin against God. I will not. Those are men that love righteousness and hate iniquity. Do we still have people like that today? That we look at sin and say, I will not, no matter the man that is putting pressure on you to take off your clothes, you say, I will not do this wickedness and sin against God. But what do we have today? We have Christians who are even begging to sin. Begging to sin. I remember one of my daughters came recently on, was it, yeah, on Sunday, said to me that the man that she had told me that wants to marry her, the guy said, listen, if I don't sleep, there is no marriage. I want to test first. Did I tell you the story of testing? I went to a perfume shop and I began to spray different perfume. After a while, my nose could not smell anything. So the guy said, how does this smell? I said, I can't smell anything. He said, wait, you need help. He brought out a bowl of coffee. He said, sniff it like cocaine. I said, eh? <laughs> I'm sniffing coffee. Church, if you test here, test Sibusiso. Test freedom. Test Simpiwe. A time will come, you will lose your taste. You need spiritual coffee. Many of you now. Yeah. <laughs> test there. Test there. <laughs> That's how I had to smell coffee. Before I could smell again. The man said to him, if I don't test, I will not marry you. Tell him to go to hell. Tell him I said so. Any man that wants to test before they marry you, tell him to go to where? Where do they belong? Hell. And I hope you are not the one that wants to test. Let's even start from you now. Amen, somebody. He said, I will not do this wicked thing. And the Bible said that the, Joseph came back the woman told the husband, listen, the Hebrew boy you brought wanted to rape me because she had taken the guy's shirt and Joseph ran out of the room. And Potiphar took the shirt, went to court and pressed charges. Next thing, Joseph is before the magistrate and they threw Joseph in jail. Joseph was in jail. Can you see how... Now, church, if you were Joseph, you have had this dream. God spoke. Would you not ask God, are you the one or should we look for another? That's where many of us are. And I want to correct that paradigm today. That God is hiding in your trouble. God is hiding in that affliction. Don't quit. Don't give up. Stay there. Hang in there. Help is on the way. And I can tell you, your latter end will be greater than your former. The Bible tells us clearly that the glory of the latter day house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord. 
I will fill this house with my glory. I will fill it. It tells us that your light affliction, which is but for a moment, that means that situation is temporary. The word a moment there means it's not going to last forever. That thing Satan tells you is going to be forever will not be forever. That prayer Satan told you God will never answer is a lie from hell. God has heard you. And he will answer you. You will stand up one day to testify. Oh boy, you will testify. Somebody say, I will testify. Someone was, uh, on Sunday, I was leaving. Somebody slipped uh, an envelope into my hand. And I, I read the message they put there on the, on the envelope. She says, look, this is 10,000 rents as Thanksgiving offering. And she says, you know, I, I, I was jobless for years. And God just turned around my story. Yeah. Now, now, you can imagine not having a job for a long time. And you now being able to give 10,000 rents as Thanksgiving. After you pay your tithe and you still have to live for the rest of the month. When God restore you, eh? Uh, somebody holla, it shall be many more times where I am. Oh, relax. Calm down. Please touch your neighbor on the shoulder. Say, calm down. Oh, calm down. Calm down. Don't let that trouble. Satan, Satan is very loud. Unfortunately for you and me, he's a loud. Satan is a loud speaker. He's very loud. He knows how to tell you that that disease will kill you. He knows how to tell you that you will end up nothing. You will go nowhere. He will tell you that your, your, your life is finished. You will not amount to anything. And many times he will even use your own parents, your relatives, people around you. He will use them to tell you you will end up as nothing. But let him watch God. I say let him watch God. I just wish the children of Israel didn't misbehave in the wilderness. I wish they still held on to Jesus. I wish they still continued. I mean, they would have ended up in Canaan land. But unfortunately, when, when God brought them, every point God brought them to, every point of transition, they doubted God. Moses went up the mountain. They took off all the gold they took from the Egyptian women and made a golden calf and began to worship. The, they said, this is the God that, can you imagine? The God that brought us out of Egypt. May your job never become a God to you. I say, may the money God blesses you never become a God. May your husband that God gave you never become a God. May what the wife God gave you never become your God. Your children must not be your God. You trusted God for a child. Now the child come. You become prayerless. You stop coming to church. You stop everything you were doing as a child of God. Beloved, bring your child to church. Let the baby lay down in the court. He's hearing the message that is being preached. Am I talking to a believer? Church, we have charged God foolishly. And many of us tonight, I want us to repent before God and say, Lord, I have said some careless things. I've said some things. I've done, I've charged you foolishly. I've said some stupid things in my time of trouble. I just thought that this thing will not end. But let me tell you, weeping may endure for a night. Finish that sentence. A joy comes in the morning. It only lasts for a night. Don't give up. Don't quit. Cry, but keep moving. Cry, but keep praying. Feel bad, but keep praying. Satan must know that you are tougher than him. Can I hear a name? Eh? You, are, you, are, you are more tougher than him. Satan must, when he look at you, he will see still. This one never gives up. No matter what we have done, he keeps moving forward. He keeps praying. He keeps believing God. He keeps confessing. He will not quit. Let me tell you, church, anytime you quit, anytime you begin to talk nonsense, charging God, guess who is rejoicing? The devil, you see, they are in hell. Listen, just like that lady came to give testimony yesterday, on Sunday, sorry, and said, God has changed my story. God has done what? 
changed my story. I don't know who she is. I can't even remember her face. I just know somebody slipped an envelope to me as I was leaving church. Now, church, I only, in fact, it was only today I saw it. I didn't even have time. It was today. And she put her number. So I called her to thank her. Since Sunday. Because I, for me, it's not about money. No. I just put everything in my bag. I only touched it today. I said, oh, wow. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. You know, church. But anyhow, she shared her testimony. Now, how many of you know that testimony is to the glory of God? She said, I just wanted to thank God. So, angels are rejoicing over her testimony. Even me, I rejoiced. Abba, who will not rejoice? I said, when I finished reading there, I said, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. But now, imagine if she quit halfway. Guess who will be rejoicing? Satan and all his demons. They will in hell be saying, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, they will not thank Jesus. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Please don't quit. All I'm saying is, listen. In this first quarter of the year, Satan will make it look tough. You have fasted. You've prayed. You've done all. Listen to me. After the month of April, get ready for overflow. I came to announce another season that is coming after the month of April. Get ready for supernatural overflow. I'm talking overflow that will shock you, shock your enemies, shock everybody that has looked down on you. Get ready. It's coming. It's coming. So relax. Don't give up. The enemy is putting so much pressure. Your marriage is under pressure. Your life, your finances, your job, everything is becoming harder each month. Wait. Jesus is just waiting another two days. Oh, and that story will change forever. Somebody shout amen. I say rejoice in the Lord your God. Glory. Oh yeah. It's not going to end in shame. I said it's not going to end in cry only. Weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. I said your joy is coming in the morning. You will testify. We have seen too many change of stories for us not to believe God anymore. That God can turn it around. He can turn my situation around. That my joy is coming in the morning. Am I talking to somebody? I say your joy is coming in the morning. Your rejoicing is coming in the morning. You are going to come back and park your car in front of the church. And we will be dedicating your brand new Bentley on a Sunday. We'll be dedicating, oh my God, am I talking to somebody? You are going to call Pastor KG and say, God has done it again. I just bought a house for 10 million rent in Mayas that Eco Estate. Am I talking to a believer that believes? Oh yeah. It's not going to end like this. I can assure you. I'm assuring you by the word of God that I have already, I have already passed through. Not just that I read it, I've been through the process. I've been through the process. That they that mock you will make you. They that mocked you will laugh with you. Sarah said, every, when Sarah gave birth to a child, she said, everyone that has laughed at me is now laughing with me. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said, that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Everyone that has laughed at you will laugh with you. They will rejoice with you. They will come for your party. They will come for your wedding. They will come for your house dedication. Am I talking to somebody? Relax. Don't quit. Don't give up. It's the easiest thing to do. But we never take the easy way out. We know that God is for us. And who can be against us? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh this world. And this is the victory that overcome this world, even our faith. You must stay in faith. Don't let anything kill your faith. Never doubt God. Don't be in unbelief. Oh, this thing is not going to happen anymore. Shut up! 
Don't, don't let your mouth say it. If your mouth say it, say, I repent and keep moving. Jesus, I believe you. Jesus, I trust you. I know you will come through for me. If you could raise Lazarus, Lazarus' case was the, clo it was the closest of all cases. Dead after four days. Jesus showed up. Where did you put him? He said, there. He said, remove the stone. They removed it. The sister said, Master, by now, he stinketh. That means even your own sisters and brothers have given up on you. That your case is, is a hopeless case. They have given up, but not Jesus. Every other person, even your pastor can give up on you. But Jesus will never give up on you. That's the truth. That no matter what, don't let anybody make you feel like God has given up. No, God will never give up. Paul said, I know in whom I believe. And he's able to keep to the utmost that which is committed unto him unto the day of our Lord Jesus. He's able to save to the utmost. He's able to deliver to the utmost. That no matter where, how low life has thrown you, the same God that raised Lazarus from the dead, the same God that parted the Red Sea, Am I talking to somebody? I said the same God that raised Jairus' daughter. The same God that walked on water. Am I talking to a believer? The same God that raised the woman of the city of Nain, the widow woman, raised her son back to life. The I'm talking about the same God. The same God that turned water to wine. is going to turn your life around. Oh, it's going to turn your situation around. Glory to God. Don't give up. Don't give up. So let's hold on to him. Let's hang on. I made up my mind. I'm going to hold on to him. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye, word. Goodbye, word. Yes, choir. I stay no longer with you. You guys can come up. Goodbye, nations of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Oh, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. All right, sing it. Let's go. Form, the raga form, amen. Let's dance in this place. I made up my mind to go this way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Let's go. What to go? Ben. Alright. Somebody dance to the Lord today. Dance. Come on. Come on.
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Woo. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo. Somebody say, my praise is a weapon. Shout it out like my praise is a weapon. You didn't just sing. You just released a weapon. Against all the forces of darkness. I tell you, are you excited in this house tonight? My God. Oh, shake the devil off. Just shake him off. Shake him off. Shake Satan off your life. Shake him off your job. Shake him off your marriage. Shake him off your finances. Shake him off your destiny. Shake off the devil. Somebody just shake, 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 shake. My God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those are prophetic symbols. Every devil that followed you here has left you alone. I said they have left your destiny alone. Shout amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you, the devil didn't expect that one. Oh, he didn't. And we just release weapons. Weapons of warfare. I'm telling you. Church, let's be excited. If you know what is happening in heaven right now, just the fact that in the midst of trouble we are worshiping God. Let's rejoice, man. Go home, eat the best meal you can. Sleep like a baby tonight. Let the devil know I ain't gonna be worried about anything anymore. I will not be anxious for anything. Oh yes. Bible says be anxious for nothing. Uh -huh. I feel that thing there. I can feel it. Aya. This choir is born again. Aya.
Jesus. I tell you. There is faith in this atmosphere. I said there is faith in this atmosphere. Ooh, we. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands and just thank him. Give him thanks. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you. Lord, we didn't expect you to do us good tonight, but yes, you have done us well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We didn't expect it to go this far, but Lord, you have come through for us. Thank you for the rejoicing in the heart of your people. This is a sign that we are winners. That we have won this battle. Therefore, we rejoice in you. We thank you. We honor you. We celebrate you. We worship you. We adore you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church say, Amen. Church, hold on to Jesus. Somebody just say, hold on to Jesus. Amen. Are you blessed? Just come and leave an offering on the altar. Choir, let's tata to this thing out of the auditorium. I like that tata. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Come on.